Okay, what I'm, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do a small value study to show you how to get believable atmosphere in a painting. Now I'm doing this on a little 5 by 7 canvas. You can do these on a little masonite panel or you can do them on little, you know, the canvas boards. Uh, just little 5 by 7 things so you can do them quick and easy. I've taken a, a photograph here that is a, is a pretty bad photograph. You see this tree right here. The dark, the, the dark value of that tree is the same as these dark trees here in the background. So this photograph really shows no depth. It, sh it shows a picture of, of a forest and a tree and a mountain, but it doesn't communicate any depth. You believe that photograph because it's a photograph. If you paint it that way, it'll look like you copied a photograph. It won't look like you painted outdoors. I'm going to show you a, a quick exercise in how to get that to look like it's Look, look to look real, to, to, to have a sense of distance and atmosphere. This is a 5 by 7 canvas and I'm going to make it so you can look you can look about 10 miles back into it. Okay, the first thing I'm looking at is that tree, right? The tree right here, it's badly composed. It's over to the edge. I'm going to move that into about the, th I'm going to move it into the, to a third. Come in, it's in one of the thirds of the canvas and just just kind of sketch in this thing and bring it down to the ground in here. You know, there'll be a little shadow under it. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is this horizontal thing here. My bottom third is it's where the where the horizontal part of the land meets the uh, the vert more vertical part. Then I've got these foothills that are going to come. I've got this. This comes up and. Kind of, I'll give it a little more shape than it is. It's kind of a boring shape that it has on here. And then the mountains behind it. I've got a mountain. You know, I'm going to, I've got a little mountain going off, a little off camera, tucks behind. And then over here, I've got, uh, I've got a mountain. And then over here, now I've got to decide if one, you know, one of these mountains has to be more dominant. And since the tree is over here, I think I'm going to make this mountain a little larger than the other one. Oh. So there's, there's, now, now I have, see this tree is one shape. The ground is a shape. That's two. The foothills are a shape. Three. The mountain is a shape. Four. And the sky is a shape. Five. You want to, you want to reduce your canvases down to between three and seven shapes. Uh, sometimes the strongest compositions are actually three. But if you get more than seven, if you get less than three or more than seven, uh, less than three is going to bore the viewer. More than seven is going to confuse the viewer. Okay, the first thing I have to do now, things standing upright in the foreground are the darkest value. So I'm going to mix up. I've got a, a, my cool mud here. I've mixed up using my three cool colors. Or you, can, or you can use burnt umber for this, for your mud. But I'm mixing... I'm taking cool, my cool yellow, my cool blue, and then I'm just going to quickly mush in just the, you know, just a sloppy, just a sloppy pine tree. I'm going to put it here. You know, I don't necessarily want it to, you know, I don't have to spend a lot of time making it look, uh, you know, really real. This is not a finished painting. This is just an exercise showing you what can be done. So th there's my there's my foreground tree. Now you notice in my photograph those background the darks in those background photo or trees are just as dark as the darks in this foreground tree. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add blue, a little bit of blue and a little bit of white to my uh, to my color and then I'm going to test it right. And I want to test it right next to this tree and see it's still too dark. And it needs a little bit more green and maybe a little more white. If you add much white to it, you have to make it too light. Some I've found that with greens, the greens have a tiny bit of red in them. They work, especially in the background, they work a lot better. So now, let's see here, still needs a little more white. So this, I'm getting right in here next to it. So I can, yeah, I'm, I'm, I want it just for the sake of the exercise. I, I kind of like the value, but I'm going to make it just a little bit lighter, just, uh, just for the sake of the exercise. And see, I want this background, this background 
is more has more to do with the color of the atmosphere and the air. It's, this color is being influenced by the trees, but it also, you have to consider the, the, the atmosphere, the color of the air. When things go back into space, they generally get a little lighter and a little bluer. So there's, there's my background. And then if I, if I, want, if I want this to go uh, you know, kind of back and forth side to side, I'll darken this side. So this side becomes a little closer to the viewer. Okay, so now I've got two values in. Now the next value, I'm going to t add white to this, to this color, and I'm going to use a little blue and red. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving the tree line, and now I'm, I'm going up to the mountain. The mountain is rock, so I'm going to leave those greens behind. I'm going to put a little more blue. Test, always test your color. And remember, the main thing with this exercise is to get the values correct. So I want this to be lighter. And see, I want, see, just as I started this color next to that, so I know immediately what the value relationship is, I want to start my mountain down here at the bottom. So I know, you know, I don't want to start up here and then get down here and find out my color's not right, or my value's not right. I want to start right at that edge and then go up with my mountains. So as I come across, I'll keep putting this, this purple color in. Okay, so there's, now I've got, you can see, you can already start to see that this tree is in the foreground. Those trees are in the background, and those mountains are in the way background. Now, if I want to, I can use a little more white and a little more blue. See, if I have any more mountains going back into space back here, they're going to be, every mountain range that goes back gets lighter and bluer. And, you know, I should, I want to keep this really simple, but... There, I'll just there. I'll just put another another mountain range going back. So, again, to reiterate, darkest value, things vertical in the foreground. Next value, things vertical in the background, and every every uh, everything going back gets lighter and bluer, and lighter and bluer. So now I'm go now my so yeah, I'm going here. Darkest, lighter, lighter, and then my foreground down here will be lighter. Now I'm going to I'm going to do a kind of a combination of yellow yellow and blue. I you know I can get some fall colors. The color is kind of irrelevant. It could be like you know any any season I want. I think I want it a little bit lighter than that. And again, I'm going to start I'm going to start this right up next to the trees so that I know that I'm, I know that this is lighter than this. See, if I start down here, I don't know what that value relationship is. So what I'm doing here is, now I'm coming down and I'm, I kind of smeared the bottom of that tree a little bit so that I looked like I'd have a shadow. I don't, for this exercise, that's probably not real important. But see, <clears throat> there, again, see, I'm reiterating again. Darkest value, I in vertical objects in the foreground, darkest value. Background lighter, background lighter, and now the horizontal is lighter. See, I'm only working one direction in value. I'm just, this, this simplifies everything. I don't, I don't find myself getting lost and sandwiched between two values because I'm only going one direction. Now I'm going, I'm, now I'm cleaning my brush out pretty good and I'm getting some, some warm blue <clears throat> the bottom of the sky, now the sky is the source of the light. So generally, you know, it's not always, but generally the sky, the sky is the source of the light. So it's going to be lighter than anything else in my, in my painting. <clears throat> uh, it's, the sky is generally lighter at, down at the bottom part of the sky and warmer. So what I'm doing here is putting in the bottom part of my sky with just warm blue and white. And then, then 
as I go up, so I'm going to grab just a little bit of cool blue and put in my color. And then I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to start up here and work down. I'm going to start working this right into my warm blue and work my way up. I want this color to make a gradual transition. If you start your color up here and work your way down, you'll generally end up with an edge. Where if you start down in here, down in the bottom, you make a gradual transition. You won't end up with looking like you have a, a line across the sky. So see, there's that's basically it in a nutshell. Now I can, you know, I I can go through and do more things to this. You know, I can I can take some uh, I can take some blue and white, and I can you know I can get my snow on the you know I can I can highlight the mountains. I can get snow. I can do you know there's any number of things I can do once I have my values blocked in, but I have to have. My all of my values blocked in first. Now see, I started this from the foreground, the foreground dark verticals. Then I go to the background. Then I go to the back background. Then I go to the ground. Then I go to the sky. So basically, I you know I'm start I'm painting from front to back for the most part. See, once you've got this, you can if you're a very if you're a real tight realist painter, you can finish that to the nth degree, and you still won't violate your value system and your value system is what creates the depth see if I look at if I look at this I can see much better depth than I can if I look at that even though that photograph uh, you know just really gives me all the detail I'd ever want this is a more accurate re rec a more accurate representation of the values you'll actually see if you go outside and paint you know this is not the point of making original art you're trying to learn to paint the quickest way to learn to paint is to do a few hundred of these. And then, you know, once you've done a few hundred of these, you'll get pretty bored. Jump up to a maybe 8x10 and start playing with some 8x10s. Then go to 9x12 and just keep going larger and larger. And, and your, your progress will, will move pretty fast. But do a few hundred of these. Do, do, at least do a hundred of these and then, and then start doing larger and larger.